There are certain jobs that guitar builders really, really, really don't enjoy and avoid as much as possible. When you've got a lacquered fretboard, such as what we have done on this custom shop, or Crimson Guitars custom shop, uh, Cowrie guitar, yes, I'm working on the Cowrie build again because I'm inconsistent and flighty. Fight me in the comments. The hand tool build and the SG are coming along. My life is very complicated right now. It's got a lacquered fretboard because the 42,000 year old, give or take 800 years, uh, wood, uh, curry, sorry, to pronounce it properly, is relatively soft, even though we've flooded with super glue and resin and all sorts of stuff. The issue is putting the lacquer on uh, means we've got a film of lacquer on the top of the frets and cutting that off is scary, as is evidenced by the fact that we recently had a, a, a really expensive sort of top-end Fender Strat Ultra plus Ultra something 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 come in. It's a two grand guitar and they just don't even bother doing it. Uh, Fender, even at that price point, will just run a leveling beam, one assumes, uh, or file over the top of the frets and then just leave the lacquer on the side of the frets looking all yellowy and nasty. And I just, at that sort of price point, I just don't believe that that is good enough. I do, however, understand why. And yeah, in this video, I've, I've gone through, look, I'm a, I'm a tool collector. I love hand tools. I love looking at different ways to do things. And uh, I'm fortunate enough that part of the Crimson Guitars family here is VintageToolShop.com, where we've got loads of these things, uh, loads of different things to play with and repurpose from vintage surgeon's tools yeah. For example, I mean, isn't that gorgeous? Is that not amazing? It's had a lot of limbs off, I would say. Today, I've gone through more than a few different methods to get this lacquer off without it chipping into the fretboard and leaving a mark, which is, which is the worry. Some people put on much thinner layers. People have tried to essentially lube up the frets so the lacquer doesn't stick on them. The, the whole thing is just fraught. And I think, I genuinely think that I've come up with uh, the best method yet. So let's have a look. In the finishing process, it is far more efficient to put the frets in and then spray the lacquer over the top, which is fine. It can be removed. Uh, it's just that. In the process, you end up with a, a, a valley in the middle and a little bit of a dip, uh, a little bit of a, a curve as it goes up to the sides of the frets, which means that your fretboard, if you're not careful, just doesn't stay flat, doesn't look flat. And in a custom guitar of this level, at this price point, you really want a beautiful flat surface. Everything needs to be, it just needs to be perfect. It just has to. What you have to do is go in and cut away, score a line alongside each fret and get to a point where you can remove the lacquer from the top of the fret. The accepted method is that. Use a scalpel blade. It's dodgy. It doesn't really work. The problem is that your scalpel blade has got, uh, it's a double bevel. You've got a bevel on the blade there, you've got a bevel on the blade there. And as you come in at a 45 degree angle alongside the, the bottom of the fret, if you twist ever so slightly, it can cause things to chip. And you really, really don't want to do that. Now, the reason to do this at 45 degrees is because any scoring, any cut that you make, uh, in the bottom of the, uh, in, in the fretboard will be underneath the line of the fret. Your other issue is that if you've got a lot of buildup between the frets, if you've got a lot of lacquer, you might actually miss the, the internal corner. You might end up cutting somewhere away from that, and it's not the case on, on this guitar, but uh, you end up cutting into the fretboard anyway, and it's just not ideal. This is going to be so cool. This really is going to be so damn cool when it's finished. 
So my first thought was to say, hey, what other tools do I have that could be, that could be of use? And here I have a drawer full of engraving tools, gravers for engraving metal or you know, shell inlay. We do custom inlays. Check out, if you have not yet checked out, watch the inlay in Grace Kelly's eyes. Link in the description below. It's one of, right up until the end of that process, which took months and months and months, I did not think that it would work. And it's one of the most amazing inlays I've ever done in my life. I can't believe it was me that did it. So seriously, check that out. Uh, anyway, here, yeah, engraving tools. Curves, ovals, triangles. Yeah, just, I mean, basically, this here, that's just a, that's just a chisel. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of stuff. I thought for a while that this uh, diamond pointed gravy here would be perfect. It fits nicely in the hand. And uh, I could run along the side of the fret and go in and basically clean it up just super nicely. But it still chips the lacquer. It's not a cutting motion. So, you know. And, well, syringes, files. I need to s sort this one out. Jack Daniels Old Time Tennessee Whiskey Electric Tens. Where the hell did they come from? Something else that I have planned for a long time and I'm collecting the tools for is uh, I want to make a shotgun inspired guitar. Specifically the part where you've got the the graving. So did I say engraving? I meant checkering and uh, essentially if you look at wow okay, there's some incredible things in here there we go there's a little bit of checkering there let's zoom in come on what are you looking at and it's the cross hatch pattern where you take one of these tools and you essentially run along the lines and uh, they, they follow each other and then you do the diamond pattern. It's this checkering that you got on the handle. And uh, I think that sort of thing on a guitar could be pretty awesome, don't you? Anyhow, I've been collecting the tools. And that, for example, somebody's handmade that over a triangular file, I think. That, going into the edge of the, uh, of the fretboard, seems to me to be something that would do the job quite nicely. Uh, this one here doesn't want to sit still. It's just a single blade. It's got teeth cut into it. It sits nicely and cuts like this. So there's lacquer on the top of that. And essentially, I'm cutting through the first layers of the lacquer at the at the right angle. Now, you can feel when you go into the metal, or you start getting near to the metal. And obviously, at that point, you stop. Even though I am going to be grinding, grinding, I'm going to be crowning, polishing, shaping, sanding, etc. What I haven't done is started properly. The very first thing you do is deal with the ends, because I've got a lacquer on there as well. And if you push too far, you might blow out and take a whole chunk over here. So the first job is actually to take your scalpel blade, look at the, uh, the fret that you're working on, and just very gently cut away the lacquer on the end. Now, that's one method. Another is to take one of my favorite tools. This is a Crimson Guitars fret end finishing file. And essentially, this has got a flat side on one that we've ground absolutely perfectly flat. And on the other, it's got a slight round. So you can go in and at this point, deal with the fret ends. And this is breaking the lacquer just gently because it's a very fine file. It's starting the process that you're gonna have to do later anyway, which is obviously doing your fret ends. And once you've broken that, you come through with your scalpel blade and just cut away the excess. Uh, now, if I used a leveling beam, I could just sand the whole edge off, 
uh, you need to be careful at that point that you don't go through the edge. Uh, so, and in this case, because I'm being very careful, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather spend a little bit more time on this than run the risk of having to re-lacquer. Anyway, we've gone back to our single line checkering tool. And yes, we're leaving slight marks. That's not a problem. We are going to be sanding and buffing and changing all of this. Now, I did most of these frets using this tool. And then, with your scalpel blade, make sure that the lacquer is being pulled up like so. I need a fresh scalpel blade. Now the way Fender et al. do it is uh, they'll just take the whole top of the lacquer off with a with a leveling beam, etc., and then just leave these little bits and pieces on the uh, on the side. Now the problem I've got is uh, that I'm working at all sorts of angles. I've still got the uh, the double uh, bevel on the side of my uh, scalpel blade here. And uh, what I really want is just, is it too much to ask, is a perfectly flat fretboard and, you know, a nicely shiny finish. And that got me thinking, <sighs> what do I have that makes things nice and flat? And uh, we go back to my favorite tool, or one of my favorite tools. Uh, I suppose my favorite tool is uh, always the tool that is most useful in the moment. And essentially with this file, I spend a lot of time uh, using this for fret work. And I actually do, when I'm doing the fret ends, I take a corner off and take the corner off. And sometimes you end up with a little nib of untouched metal. And at that point, I will put the, the file flat on the fretboard and just file that metal down. It's a very, very, very fine file. And here you can see, I'm using it on the lacquer. And this is something that uh, most people would say, Ben, you're absolutely insane. Don't do that. Uh, most people probably wouldn't even consider it as an option. But by gum, it works. So I use this to essentially flatten the uh, flatten the finish that's uh, that's in the way. And using the safe edge, you can also go along the side and remove any vestigial marks or vestigial bits of uh, bits of finish that you don't want. This will allow us to go uh, afterwards and just polish the frets absolutely perfectly. After that, you know it's uh, it's wet and dry paper, a little bit of water, etc. And you're good. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a it's a process. But it can be improved. And uh, wrap the paper around the file and push it up against the fret. If you've got very, very, very thin lacquer that you're worried about, then don't do this, obviously. But if you've got very thin fr uh, finish, then you won't need to do this, essentially. I've had to build up a relatively hard layer for this guitar in order to protect it. Okay, and then another Crimson product. Look at me, I'm doing all the selling today. Uh, this is the uh, uh, ultra mega versatile multi-use guitar polish. Uh, now this isn't what I'm going to finish the guitar with uh, in the end, but it does give you an idea of just how easy it is to do this. Uh, I'm obviously going to buff this on the buffing machine, etc. But with a little bit of work on camera and live, we now have that flat fretboard that we want. We've got uh, 
no lacquer on the fret. The whole fret can be polished and looking great. It doesn't, it's not quite as shiny as it should be, of course, because I rushed that bit. But uh, we'll go over and do that later. The problem is, I have another favorite tool. Are you surprised? If this is a job that you do, this is going to change your life. A good, sharp chisel. So when you sharpen a chisel, you sharp them, sharpen them at different bevels for different purposes. If you've got a 25 degree bevel, it's a, it's a chisel for just smacking and doing heavy, chunky old work. This has got a single bevel and it is sharpened at a 30 or so degree angle. So it's for pairing for delicate work. So it's got a, a sharper edge, a pointier edge, as it were, than most chisels. You can see that, uh, you can see that bevel there. Uh, actually, this isn't as sharp as, uh, as it could be. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty sharp. But yeah, don't judge me too harshly, please. I spend a lot of time with my chisels pairing and you've seen me do it. You'll put the chisel down on a flat surface and then pair away and essentially it doesn't touch the surface but, well if it's a flat surface and this, this one isn't, but it takes away whatever's sitting on the top. Nicely and gently and uh, with yeah, no mess, no fuss. Now, if you left a comment, the comment was, but Ben, you're gonna chip the lacquer. What the hell are you talking about? And you're right. If you push the chisel through, you're absolutely right. Okay, so there we go. Now, just very carefully, I'm following the radius, I'm pushing down, following the radius and pulling backwards. along the edge of the fret. Now I'm being careful as much as I can not to drag that corner, the opposite corner uh, on the fretboard of course. But what this is doing is acting as a, a, a reverse knife or a single bevel knife which would also do this job nicely. Hell I could probably use my leather man for this if I wanted to. Once you're done just make absolutely sure, now that you've created your, your bevel, just go through with a scalpel blade and, and double check. But the whole thing, and you could also do this. So at this point, if I'm supremely careful, I'll be able to pick up the entire piece without breaking it. which is you know, not necessary. I'm supposed to be showing you how this is uh, easier and quicker. And I'm just making it more complicated by giving myself artificial challenges because I'm an umpty. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this, uh, this fills me with joy. Now we could, oh, my thumb was in the way, we could uh, probably make a custom tool to do this if we wanted to, but a good old fashioned sharpened chisel, that's your baby. Almost one piece. And there we go. So that's good. My, my lacquer is nice and flat. There was no risk of chipping anything because it was all scored through and just perfect. If you need to, you can go back use the same process. So I've got a little ridge of, of finish there where I've cut through. 
and you can just take that down with your file and go through the process. And that there is, I'm going through a process right now of questioning absolutely everything about, well, everything, my life. It's all, uh, it's all changing. Hell, you'll notice, uh, you'll notice that. Um, and uh, the way that I build things for the longest time, I've had, I've had a method, I've had a tool, I've had a process, and th it doesn't have to be what it was. And in fact, there are improvements. And as a tool designer, uh, I really do need to open my eyes. This, for example, tiny little lovely, just basic water bottle with a syringe tip on it. That is so useful to me. Hell, we should probably sell them at crimsonguitars.com. And uh, there we go. So I'm currently going through and rethinking every single process that I do uh, from the ground up and taking advice from people. So if you guys have advice for me, if you have a method that you love, if you've got a custom tool or a tool that you have, have custom made to do a job, and it's something that you think that uh, we, should, we should make and share with other people so that they gain the same benefits that you have, then, hey, get in touch. Uh, I am very open at the moment. This was a lot more talking than I normally do in a video, but I felt that it was an interesting process and I thought that maybe it would be of use to you. So, hey, if you've liked that, fantastic. If you haven't, please don't leave. I do value your support. Uh, this guitar is coming together. I am finishing the hand tool only build. Uh, th there are a billion things going on right now. And uh, yeah. I'm struggling to keep everything uh, uh, copacetic, shall we say. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, check out crimsonguitars.com. I appreciate your support. And uh, I'm going to take the dog for a walk. And he didn't even hear me say it. Bippin', walkies.